Welcome to Vancouver Entertainment Magazine. I'm your host, EJ Love. Today we have uh, Anthony McRae. Thank you. Thank you. McRae Fashions. Me. And uh, how you doing, brother? Thanks. I'm doing all right. It's always great to bump into old friends and see what they're doing. Oh, yeah. Just appreciate it. Thanks oh, for having me on your show. Man, it's a, a wonderful to have you here. So talk a little bit about yourself first. Uh, explain to the folks where you're from and your history, whatever. We can get into that, and then we just let it roll. Copy that. I'm from Montreal. Moved out here about 20 years ago, okay. and it's so hard to leave. Yeah. It's a beautiful city. The energy is awesome. It's just a matter of just uh, making sure that more people come up. Right. And yeah, this is, this is where I'm at. This is where I'm staying. You miss Montreal? Yeah, I go back. I go back every chance I get. Right. And then I leave there every chance I get. <laughs> <laughs> and then I come back to BC. Right. Yeah, Montreal's beautiful, except I'm used to the mountains now and the rivers and to be able to get away and escape into nature. Right, right. Back east, we're limited with that. Okay. And that's the only thing that's missing back east is just to be able to escape. For all who don't know, me and Anthony, we have a great history of friendship and kinship. We've known each other for over two decades or so or more. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've seen the scene out here grow. Now, with fashion, brother, yeah. what do you think about Vancouver's fashion style and sense of fashion here? It's interesting because fashion is it's, it's really about attitude. Right. So I, I notice people follow trends. So they don't really have an identity as much more of like a trend. Scene. So like, yeah, so they're seeing it. It's okay. I mean, the women are, they're beautiful. So whatever they wear, they're going to look beautiful in, right? So right, right. The men are there to be men, right? So, yeah. But they follow. Yeah. So if, they, yeah. if something looks good on MTV or whatever, they, 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 they actually try to copy them. Get yeah. The same tattoos as them. So, yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I noticed uh, when I first got here in around 1990 or so, I mean, just the, the, the businessmen, uh, the, the, the top end, didn't seem to have a sense of identity with their clothes, man. I, no, it's hard. You know, it, it, it really is. I mean, they basically, they, you know, they walk in the shop and they have to be guided around what to wear. Uh -huh. And a lot of it I found was uh, just a little bit bland. You know, it wasn't popping. You know, the suits just didn't. I remember when I, you remember when I first, when we first came up here. Yeah, everybody thought I was pimp because the way you dressed all the time. Yeah. You didn't wear jeans. I know, right? right? <laughs> Dress shoes, nice shirt. Be like, what? You a pimp? I'm like, nah. That's yeah. That's the culture I grew up with. Yeah, that's yeah. so. Now everybody's in the jeans and sweatpants and and. Speak warm. about that for a minute. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Speak about that uh, that pimp thing. Uh -huh. um, well, pimp was just more like attitude because I wasn't a pimp, but I had that sort of like maybe the swagger. Yeah. Right? The dress, the, you know, trying to look good. Right. So we associated looking good yeah. with like being a pimp, but I wasn't really pimping. It was just more like just feeling. But where do you think moment. that came from, man? I mean, because I, I, I got approached like that too. I, I, I love to dress. I come in clean. Um, I'm, I'm disciplined about the way I look each day. Yeah. And uh, yeah, if it's too good, people were assuming, you know. Movies. Yeah. So most people get their concepts from movies. Right. So they watch a lot of movies. Right. And whatever the movie says you are, and they see somebody out there that kind of looks like you would be in that movie. Right. Boom, you, you be that movie. Right? So, so identifying with You identify a movie. Wow. Like you look like a pimp. Huh. You know what I mean? You look like you got some money. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just <laughs> like. Black and with money? You know what I mean? What? Got to be a pimp for that. Really? Not yeah. really. No. No, no, I don't like that stereotype. I don't like that stereotype. Either. Amen on that one. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> now let's get on with the show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I like the setup. I like the setup. This is beautiful. This is this is good. Thank you. With the COVID, what I really appreciate that is that it brings people out and makes you show who you are. Oh, exactly. Right? Exactly. So I like to see what you're doing. This is nice. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I've got a great staff of people here that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Seeing it around there, looking without them. I'm looking around. I'm seeing things I like, seeing things I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> nice, Speaking nice. of don't likes, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> what is it you don't like about the way fashion is right now, the trend, and how it's turning now? What I always didn't like about fashion is the acceptance of how they got their stuff. Right. Right. So they would buy things, and it's expensive. Right. But they didn't trace it back to where it came from. The roots and of the, the clothing. The roots of the clothing. Right. And that, to me, is like where they can get to make the prices so high. Right. I mean, my fashion is high. I mean, I design my stuff. I make it in Canada. Mm. And I try to make Canada great again. There you go. And, yeah, and you get to have, I guess, profit is great. Right. But I don't want to exploit 
to get that, right? So if I can get workers here to make my stuff and I could people can see the value of what I make. Right. And then they can pay me the price that I can continue to want to design because right. it's really about trying to have a better life for myself right. by offering something that I think people really would appreciate. So, yeah. I like Wicked. It. Yeah. So now, where did you get your influence from? There's, there's not a lot of, quote, unquote, top black designers out there. What was your inspiration? Where did you find, where did you? The, the top that you guys look for is, like I said, if you follow media and television, right. then you're always going to have your top, your Versace's and your you know, colognes. You're exactly. always going to have that. Exactly. But if you follow reality and fashion, like who the person you see right beside you, right. and if they're just as fly as, as your Versace suit, then you got to realize that maybe you're just being herded into a wrong direction. Mm. Um, so. Well, they say image is everything. And, of course, they're, they're you know, there's not a lot put out there for people to emulate as far as young black men and women who want to be in this business. Uh, it's kept on a kind of like up here. We don't hear what's going on down south with the designers. We don't hear what's going on with the black designers a lot here in Canada. It's not covered. My great, my late uncle was what kind of was the head tailor for Le Chateau back in the day. So that was almost like a designer wow. back in those days. Yeah. And then my eldest brother is a fashion designer. Okay. And my baby sister has a clothing store mm -hmm. all through the Caribbean. So it's sort of like, um, I never really looked. And when I went to fashion school, I didn't know about other designers. Right. I didn't know that I even had to go to school to actually become a designer. Right. right. When I went to school, they taught me about becoming a worker. And I was like, oh, I thought I was already a designer because I didn't need them to design my ideas. I just wanted them to help me figure out how to put it together. Right, right. Right, so. Okay. I think uh, you can also be a, you can be a top designer to yourself yeah. and not really worry about worry about what's uh, yeah. yeah like if I'm not seen on television it doesn't mean that I'm not a top designer it just doesn't right. mean that right um, so now wait a minute you've got a family lineage of fashion designers yeah yeah wow yeah. Well, and I wouldn't design like I think my designs are everybody would try to say original yes but I think they are I mean they say nothing's new under the sun. Okay. Well, this is Judge's son. And Judge's son made something new. <laughs> so I like to do things that I think are new and relevant. I don't just make fashion. Like, I won't just make a hoodie because I can make a hoodie. Right. Right? right. I would need to make the hoodie that's never been made before that is needed. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And with fabric now, what I've decided is that a lot of fabric, a lot of designs, they waste a lot of surface material. Okay. Right, so it's just a waste of like the sleeve, just a long sleeve, but nothing to do is just a sleeve. Right, when they could have something in there, like a, a sleeve, like a pocket or something right. to make to utilize the whole function of of uh, your garments. Right. So I try to design that as you know that's I think offers more right. than what you would really get when people are just looking for money or something. You know, what do people look for when they look at your fashions? When they look into what you're doing, what what is it that you you're trying to say or express in the way you you design your clothes? That's funny because they always ask me what genre I do, and it's really what attitude I have at that particular moment. Right. So I design children's clothing, women's clothing, men's clothing. Right. Only because I'm thinking of that. Right. Right. So it's whatever I feel I think of. And what people really want to, if they want to, I don't know. I don't like to be judged as a designer. I like right. to be judged as a, you know, as a, an artist. Okay. So, so now as an artist, when you were coming up as a child, <clears throat> where did it start to seep in on you that fashion was going to be your calling? <laughs> um, I was in the Toronto Stock Exchange. I thought I was going to become a, a broker because <laughs> I have five brothers. So my eldest brother is also in the industry, in the um, stock exchange. Wow. I was doing that. I was doing the regular nine to five, you know, <coughs> suit and tie, did all that. And then right. one day, I just said, hey, I'm going to fashion school. And yeah, that was it. <laughs> I went to LaSalle College. Really? And then, yeah. I just, yeah how I just was your time there? Way. How was your time at LaSalle? That's when I realized, well, I, I ended up meeting a really other talented designer. Right. And uh, yeah, together we teamed up and we opened up a, had our stuff in Cold Royale and some some uh, local, I think Robin Williams kind of wore right. one of our stuff. So yeah, it opened my world. It opened my because you get to meet other talented people, right? And you didn't realize you're not really just doing this all by yourself. And we collaborated and came. It was called I and I Production. Wow! Yeah. Wow! 
wonderful. Man, that's it's it's so, you know, wonderful to uh see s- someone like yourself and 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 myself out here doing it. And I mean, man, you know, because like you say, I, the, the one issue you just you mentioned is like, yeah, he looks good, he dresses good, but he's this, you know, they pigeonhole you. And, you know, not a lot of us are are, are kept up the speed of what we're doing right now and who we are. Um, I don't go out and tell it every day, you know, to everyone. So it, it's really enlightening. Now, <clears throat> when's the last, uh, the last show you did? I did a, I think just before the COVID. Yeah. I did a little show. Okay. A small little preview. Yeah, yeah. Of my where, hoodies. Whereabouts? Um, whereabouts did I do it? It was just a local venue. It was down off of um, Second and Canby, I'm going to say, because yeah, yeah. just to say it's a street somewhere. Right. <laughs> and I did it. But I like to, I mean, I also write movies, right? right? So I shot a movie, and I like to incorporate my ideas and, and put my designs in them and just sort of, like, just keep on going. And yeah. How did the, uh, this virus affect your business? Oh, uh, it actually, uh, yeah, it, it stopped it completely. Okay. Right? So, yeah, it made it come to a halt. I mean, there's nobody really... I didn't find, yeah, it just completely stopped because there was no way to get my stuff out there and I felt the economy is going to crash and nobody really wants to buy stuff in clothing. They should really concentrate on maybe food or <laughs> <laughs> instead of trying to buy an expensive hoodie. <laughs> but yeah. actually, my hoodie is for the future. So you should have my hoodie because yeah. you're going somewhere and you need to stock up. You yeah. can throw, you well, can throw some stuff. You can throw in, stuff in, in, in case you got to run, right? You got to run. Oh my goodness! You got to go. Now you can find those hoodies on uh, what is it? It's on my website, a clay McRae, which is a c l a y m c r a e dot com. Dot com. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, man. So now, how does the the this whole time now being down um, changed your business? Change the way you operate. Change the way you distribute or try to get the network out there and still be uh, relevant. Like I said, I, I think I'm an artist, right? Okay. So I design clothing. You think you're an artist? I think, well, I'd like to classify myself as an artist, okay. right? So I design clothing. What is an artist? Somebody that's willing to, you know, live in his brain and take it from his brain and bring it out into the world. I think, it's you know? a lie. It's a lie, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> so, as an artist, I could design clothing, okay. or I was also a stunt performer, so I do martial arts, and yeah. I can always, I do yoga, yeah. right, and I, I like to write, Yeah. and... Do you yeah, ever just so have periods of, of just where the creativity stops? Yeah. What, what do you do? What do you do when that happens? I love it. Yeah. I really enjoy when I have, when my brain goes completely silent of anything that it's alive and I need to get out because yeah. what happens is that's how I design. So okay. it'll take me quite a while before I don't like to just pump out stuff like, you know, make a t-shirt. So it'll take me, I don't know, months maybe at a time to really create a collection. And that's talking about the way the fabric moves, the right color, the right texture. Yeah. The, if it's zippers and, it'll, and I'll have to think about it for like, I don't know, as I'm living my life. Right. And then it just gets to a point where, it's so much in my brain that I'll either start talking to it. Right. And I don't want to be a guy walking on the street talking to him myself. So I go and create it. Right. So that's right. what happens. So whatever happens. So even when the, they slow me down, it, I think it's a great time for just rejuvenation. Right. And to figure out what's real and what's right. And, and then if, it, if I'm pushed towards maybe writing, I'll write. Okay. If I'm pushed towards designing children's clothing, I'll do it. But right now, yeah. So I like, I like, I like yeah. calm. Yeah. Well, 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 what's your motivation, man? What motivates you? What what really drives you when it comes to this work of uh, fashion? How, how does it? Well, how are you driven with this? I'm a father. Yeah. With two daughters. Okay. Just a father, period. And I think what I'd like to show them is hope. Yeah. And sometimes, like I went roller skating. So now I say, hey, I'm going to learn how to be a great roller skater, and I'm going to start teaching how to roller skate. <laughs> right? So I just Drop, skate, roll, bounce. Skate, boop, boop, right? <laughs> so I just think it's about, I, I feel like I've got to provide hope right. for, my, for my siblings or my, my lineage. So that's your driving motivation. Yeah, that's my driving motivation. <laughs> 
Dad, get out and get it done. Yeah, get it done, right? If not them, then maybe I would have been. I grew up watching Little Miss Hobo. I don't know if you guys remember about this yeah, yeah. dog that yeah, traveled. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> you know, it? you know. It? <laughs> so without my children, love them to sit dearly, I probably would have little hobos myself around the world. Right, you know? right. So, yeah. What would you be doing if you weren't doing fashion right now? I was a martial artist, and my teacher passed away. Yeah, and I got into stunts because of that. Okay. And then when the industry slowed down for me a little bit, because it's hard being a black stunt performer in Hollywood. Right. Anywhere. Mm -hmm. So when that started to slow down, I just remembered, hey, you're a fashion designer. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's how I really designing came back in. So I kind of did martial arts and fashion designing mm -hmm. at the exact same time when I was growing up as a child. Wonderful. So. Now, how is all of the um, recent issues that have been taking place across the world, across the United States border, here in Canada, how has that affected you as a human, as, as a brother? I'm so lucky because I had five older brothers that were sort of like embedded in, in history. Yes. So since by the age of 12, I've always knew that there was something bigger and greater coming. Right. So no, I'm, um, and that's another thing too. I uh, changed my diet and I've made sure that I want to be relevant and ready. Yes. So no, I'm, I'm, I think when you read and you're prepared, Yes. And you're knowledgeable. It's almost as if you're ready. Right. So I'm not, it doesn't really affect me because it's sort of, I knew the pain of uh, a great friend of mine, George Anthony. Okay. Who got killed by police when I was 18. Right. Doing the exact same thing I, would do, I was doing. Right. Right. Which okay. was, we'd go downtown, we'd take a taxi and get out of the taxi and run home because right. yes. we couldn't afford it. We were kids, right? Yeah. So they caught him one day and they killed him. And my brother came home and he goes, listen, that was my good friend, you know? So I, I knew the history of police brutality and all that stuff. Right. So, and like I said, I was learned, and you learn, you learn in life, and yes. you just sort of just stay. So when everything happens, you're not, you're not freaked out by it. You're just like, oh, okay, this is the next step to what's happening, you know? So with that being said, uh, you know. Anthony Griffith, so sorry, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. I got to tell you, Anthony Griffith. Yeah, it's Griffith. My bad. Thank all you. right. Um, with that being said about the police and, 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 and being black, what does that basically say to your soul? What, how do you prepare yourself each day as you go out here? Because there sounds we I got so many great stories of growing up in Montreal, being a black person in Montreal. That it's it's almost a contradiction in a contradiction, right? If I'm going to say, I mean, as a child, you do stupid childish things and you pay the consequences by dealing with the police, right? There was so many incidences where I could have gotten, like, maybe expired or, or completely beat up by these people. Right. But also saved by a, a police that was in the, like, okay. I got arrested one night, drunk, fighting, whatever, and the police pulled me over, but whatever. Yeah. I was in jail, and this cop comes by, and he goes, Anthony. I go, yeah, John. And we went to school together. Right. He's like, oh, my gosh. He goes, listen, these cops, they want to beat you up. I go, Really? He goes, yeah. He goes, I'm not going to let it happen. My shift's over. I'm going to stay until you're, until you're out. I went, like, really? He was like, yeah. Thank you, John. And then that's kind of like the stories of my life a little bit. So right. things now, can happen. And and with your family and your brothers and all, I, I'm sure they've had their oh, yeah. share of run-ins as well. I mean, nice. how does that make you feel today? Now, here we are. And you see these things going on right now uh, still happening. Uh, even on a major scale, I mean, like, there is nothing you can't do now and not be seen. Uh, and, and we're catching it all and we're seeing this all. How does that play out for you? How, do, how, how does that make you feel at this moment? Really? Yeah, seriously. I don't think it's as big an issue as they wanted to make it. Do sound. you think there's going to be change? There, there has to be change with us. Like once us as a community, not just, I mean, once we change, yeah, then that's going to really, you know, it's going to help change everything else. Do you think there is uh, something to be said for uh, in-house racism before we deal with the, the, the bigger issue? Because you know there is that race thing going on between us, if, you, if you're not aware. I mean, you, you can't overlook it, you know. I'm trying to say hi to a brother down the street, and he looks the other way. What? what, what? You know. Where right, so I, like I'm saying, once we deal with that, yeah, right, then everything else will just fall by the wayside. Yeah. Right. I okay. mean, not to say it's downplaying p 
police brutality, it's scary, but I don't leave my house thinking a police is going to kill me. Yes. Or anytime a police stops me, they're going to kill me. Yeah. But I live here in west coast of Canada. When I go back east, I'll tell you a story. Okay, I went back east just maybe two years ago. Right. I'm driving downtown, 12 o'clock in the nighttime. You know, as soon as I get there, boom, police pull me over, bang, get me out of the car, search my car. I had my door. He, he goes, sit back in the car. I get back in the car, and I just instinctively moved my foot into the car. He slammed the door, almost broke, tried to break my foot. Right. He was looking for something, right? And I kept my phone. I called my brother and kept it on the phone just because he knows it's 12 o'clock. I'm late by myself. I'm right. Cop pulled me over for no apparent reason, right? And yeah. that is the reality of blacks back east. Right. In the West Coast, it's, you kind of you kind of forget that. You do. You forget that, yeah, that, you know. Until you pulled over. And, and then I'm, when I pulled, yeah, but then when I still pulled over, I still react as a Canadian. Right. Who's not afraid of these cops. What does that mean? What, what does that mean, acting Canadian? Know your rights. You know what I mean? Like, I'm willing to die. I'll, I'll die tonight if that's the case. If you're going to pull me over, and like, you know what I mean? I'm going to. I'll fight back if I have to, or you're going to kill me. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to comply as much as I possibly can. I would hate to get shot with my hands in the air, but if that's, what, that's, that's what's required, then hopefully, you know, autopsy was showed that I complied and I was forced, I was wrongfully killed, you know? But, right. Yeah. So when I get pulled over, I, they ask for my, I give them the papers, whatever they ask for, and boom, we go on with their day. Do you find it uh, difficult to simulate here in this town uh being from somewhere else being black um being in a minority uh do you find it h harder to assimilate here in, in vancouver and in, in, in or have you adjusted it's it's gonna be hard it's yeah. gonna be hard because like i said once we figure out black on black oh my gosh because everything they do is black right yeah yeah so all the music is black the club's black the way they dress everything's black so once we figure that out right and it's not to be separate but equal, but once we sort of, like, know that we can count on each other, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, you're right, right now, you, because I've known you, yeah, I'm on your show. That's right. Right? And because of your show, maybe I'm able to broadcast my wares out to more people that know me or want to associate with Absolutely. me. Right? Absolutely. So as long as we just keep on, keep on trying to connect. Right. Yeah, I think uh, it would be great. Oh, man. Talk about you, your, yourself as a you. What was it like being you? As a youth? Yeah. Ah, oh, that guy's gone. He checked out, did he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, no, no, he's, he did what he had to do, but I'm not, I'm not going to live my life as a young man. You know, I'm a grown-ass person with children. Well, yeah, absolutely. So my youth, uh, I'm beautiful. I'm glad. I'm glad I didn't really break any bones. I'm glad I loved the passion that I had to yeah. take me to where I'm at. And as an older person now, I'm, I'm, lovey, I'm, I'm happy to be me, you know? Right. Living now. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about your mom and dad. Mom is great. Who's always been my dad. Yeah. So yeah, she's kicking around, doing her thing, back east, back east. You yeah. Know? Yeah. How often do you get back home to see mom? Not en not enough, but we tr I try to talk as much as possible. Right. You know what I mean? But not enough. Right. It's hard. Like economically, it's hard to do it. The way that we have flying from Canada to Calgary or whatever to Montreal, six hundred dollars a flight. Yeah, should be forty five dollars, seventy five dollars a flight. <laughs> it should be in, in Canada. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? Be. Like, what yeah. are we paying seven to eight hundred dollars to fly back east? You yeah. know. So until we start dealing with that, I'd fly back all the time. Yeah. Do you? Um, yeah. I would. Yeah. Hundred dollar flight to Montreal. But yeah. On the weekends, I'm God. I'm God out of here. Right? <laughs> oh man. So now we we we've covered you as a fashion designer now who were some of your biggest influences oh that's what i'm trying to tell you it was so funny because when i became a designer it was because of my brother my eldest brother he right. designed for his girlfriends all the time right so i i guess i like if i have to pick a name it would be kovali your brother kovali okay but i was limited in in and, and following people. I just didn't know how to follow anybody. Right. I right. did it. I really didn't. I, I, so when people ask me about who's your favorite fashion designer, I was like, my brother? Yeah. <laughs> right? That yes. was it. I didn't know anybody else because I didn't go, I didn't think I was, I didn't think I was a designer until it told me I was a designer. Right. So I didn't follow. When I was a kid, I was, you know, on the streets playing, just being a regular kid. And then when I was in, turned like 19, 
something said, hey, you're a fashion designer. I'm like, really? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. Yeah. So I went into it, and yeah, I didn't know anybody. I didn't know any any designers at all. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Still don't know them. <laughs> I, do, I figure if I follow these people, then maybe I'll be getting their ideas into my head and they won't be mine. And not to say anything, but I think if you if you could pick a few of my pieces, you would, I feel they're original. Yeah. And, I, 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 yeah, so I think I didn't corrupt my brain with other people's ideas. Right. Now, who's your target market with, with your fashion? Who, who's your target? What? what? Uh, the people with the money. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, straight up. Yeah, because <laughs> I, re- I like people that would go to, I guess, uh, well, I'm a vegan now, but let's let's go with Black and Blue, that restaurant. Okay. Right? All right. And I'll plug in there for Black and Blue. Yeah, yeah. Well, forget the rest. Okay. And those people that eat at McDonald's. Oh, okay. A little plug uh, for Mickey's. I like the people that go to Black and Blue. I just rather target those people. Mm-hmm. Nothing opposed to the ones that go to McDonald's. Right. Good for you. I like the old McDonald's. Hey, I like the fact that you think you can get a great meal for under eight dollars. Yeah, no you know clowning, I mean? yeah. no clowning. I like that, and I actually I like the person who thinks uh, you can buy, have a great meal for uh, seven hundred and forty-seven dollars. I'm like, ah, oh, those are the kind of people that should be wearing my stuff. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. I think they could afford it. I think they could afford it. <laughs> I got to get five jobs and afford to wear your <laughs> stuff, buddy. Let it's me not, tell you. It's not that. It's not so much that it's expensive, but um, it's about quality. Okay. Right? So I make the stuff here in Canada. Yeah. If I don't make a profit, then I'll be a, I'll be a slave okay. to you guys. Like, I would, I'll, I'll be missing the sunshine I'm on my sewing machine Yeah. trying to make you an outfit that you're only going to give me enough to buy thread. Right. Like, well, how else am I going to live? How much am I going to take? How am I going to enjoy my life? Right. So uh, the price is equivalent to what you're getting. Okay. But with, with my piece, it's your original. Like, you're definitely not mass produced. Like, who wants to buy a $2,000 suit right. and walk down the street and some joke can just walk around there and get it? Yeah. Right? It's yeah. like everybody has it. It's like 10,000 suits costing $2,000, you know? Right. I try to limit my... my I guess because I haven't gone major scale yet where I'm selling 50,000 units, so I can't really talk like that. Right. So I'm still ground and pop, still mom and pop kind of thing. Yeah. Where I do small units, you know. Okay. 40, 50 pieces, and hopefully never design that again. Right. Oh, yeah. Is it, are, are your pieces, are, are they one of a kind? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, because I would even change just the simple fact that the zippers are different. Okay. Or the string is different. Right. Some I, I would I, yeah, I walk into and I see you and we have the same shirt on. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> That's when I'm out. That's when I'm out. <laughs> I'm gone. But if I had the same shirt and I could just go like this, see, and say, hey, it's a different color. Well, yeah. You know, we we, can, we don't have to be in the same gang. <laughs> cool in the gang. Cool in the gang. I like I like to be individual. Right. Mm-hmm. Standing in the group, but still stand out and still be an individual. Um. How uh, has music impacted your creativity and, 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 and time flow of your, the way your pieces look? Right. Because, yeah, as a kid, too, I was a rapper. We had a group called the, the, the Devastating 3MCs. We opened up for Fat Boys, Run DMC, Roxanne Chante. Stop. All that shit, yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. They did a movie on us called, uh, right? So, yeah. Oh. And my boy, I think, Dramatic, okay. opened up the first French uh, rap group in Montreal. Right. So he was in our group, too. Wow. Yeah. Man. I think my boy Chuck Ice yeah. is still in Montreal. He yeah. has his little group. He's still doing his thing. And my boy Kid Slick is in England right now. Wow. And his daughter is an MMA champion. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, we all got kids got now. Kids man. Now, you what know happened what I mean? there? But yeah, so rapping, I used to rap. I, 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 I used <laughs> what to happened? Rap. My, my rap name was Prince Guarantee. <laughs> Guaranteed, baby. Guaranteed. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I had to break up on that one. You don't like Prince Guarantee? Oh, my goodness, oh, boy. Man, I, 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 I'm the, writing it down. Prince Guarantee I'm was writing the it shit. Down. Just doing his thing, you know what I mean? <laughs> so with that, man, I mean, my gosh, it, 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 it's been a wonderful life. Yeah. It has ups and downs, you know? Right. Uh, right. Definitely been going up. I like I like the way that the world is going. I like, even though that it's it seems like we're going down, I, f- I feel that, 
the world's changing into a better, better place. Even in isolation. I haven't isolated. No, I haven't either. Yeah, and um, the ones that the are authorities is- will come get you later. Fair enough, and I think I <laughs> the think we all have to, we all have to die on our hill. <laughs> yeah. I, I found my hill. You know, so mm. I talk just, about a bit about that. What do you mean you found the hill? Well, I found my hill. I found my 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 sword to draw on. You know, right? And my liberty is is the most important thing. Wow. Yeah. So those ones who, who are complying to a ninety nine percent recovery rate. Right. That virtually singling. Yeah. Those are the people who are the exact same ones who have kept perpetual racism going along. Yes. Right? The Karens. Yes. Right? Yeah. You could see them, and they try to blend in nicely. Yes. Right? Yes. But they're the first people to infringe on your rights. Sure. Just create division. Create division. Those are, those are the people. Right. right. I'm not opposed. Like, yeah, if we are really sick and dying, you know what I mean? Then, yeah, let's take care of ourselves. But to destroy our economy, destroy our children's future right. for a 90, 99% recovery rate, yeah. it's, 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 it's sad. I don't partic- I particularly am willing to stand on that particular hill yeah. and say no. Is that what you see right now with, um, excuse me, with the United States right now? Well, you know, I like how people try to divide the border. Yes. And say the United States is the United States. Yeah, like it's somewhere else. It's no, somewhere it, else. we're all attached no. here. I know the cops in Montreal, they told me they get trainings from the cops in Louisiana. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah. they, you know, I mean, they come down there. So, yeah, I mean, what's happening in the States, I think they're trying to go after Trump. That's what I think. That's what I feel. What do you mean by going after? We, it's Well, they're trying to make him look like he's... The, like he has started the fires, but yet Biden has been in the power for 50 years. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? The man just came in four years ago. He doesn't really know much. No. So how could you be blamed for everything that's going on, right? And you could see that. You know, so I just sort of, <clears throat> I just think that basically we just have to just prepare ourselves, you know? Yeah, right. Stay healthy. Right. Change your diet a little bit because they tell you your diet really will help you. Okay. And protecting yourself, you know? Exercise, you know? Even sleeping. Yeah, and I, I like it when people don't that do alcohol. They take alcohol, they drink, right, and they smoke. Yep, and they're pissed off that they got COVID. I'm like, you're killing me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. No, man. You're, you're doing everything. You're doing everything to your body, right? That de- that demands you to get COVID. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, come on. If you live the life, that, if you treat your body properly, it's almost like if you have a great car, you don't put petroleum, right? I mean, you put gas, right? You know, right? So. People have to put the right things. Yeah, you yeah. have to put the right things in your body, mm-hmm. and the right things will happen to you. Wow. Wow. It's wow. <laughs> beautiful. It's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it sure is. If everybody could live like this, we'd be all right. Most people are. <laughs> Most people are. Yeah. A lot of people take for granted that, they're going, that their body's efficient. Right. And will stay efficient until it's not. Right. Right? And then they say, oh, my, my mom is... Is died. I go. Has your mom ever exercised past your birth? Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, yeah. she, has she gone to the gym? Has she taken care of herself? No, yeah. you've seen that. You know how she does. She goes home. She works. She comes home. She sleeps. She, she's not really taking very good care of herself. So yeah, I mean, yeah, we really have to look at ourselves in the mirror. We really have to do, give our body what we need. Right. Okay. It's eight hours of sleep. Okay. Right. Right. No alcohol. Yeah. None. 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 If this COVID is really important to you. These are the, all the steps you really have to give up. You mean I have to stop drinking beer? Oh, you got to stop. Oh. But you, just, you said you didn't lock yourself up, so you don't have to worry about that. Oh, uh, no. Because I did meet you at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what wow. I mean? I'm well, not worried about the COVID. I'm not worried about it at all. I thought my honey ale was down the drain. <laughs> but, but I am the saying, curb. What I am saying, though, is if I do, I know it is because of what I've done. No, exactly. To weaken my immune system so that way I was able to pass away from this. Yeah. If I build my immune system up yeah. and I pass away from this, I need five more other people just like me to pass away like that right, right away too, please. Right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I got to know them. Oh, my god. to know them personally. Yeah. To know, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Well, it's, you know, you were touching on earlier about – manufacturing of your clothes. I want to kind of get back into this for a second. Um, how do you feel about the, the situation? Like you say, w- the sweatshops, yeah. they still exist. Yeah. Uh, why is that? Why haven't we've gotten more control over internationally what's been going on? 
and you know, why why haven't we? Oh, there's thousands of reasons, right? Yeah. But the main reason is selfishness, right? right? It's easy to just accept. It's just easy. Okay. I, I'm sure everything that I, on my clothes, like I have bad shoes on, I got, you know, I just accept it's cheap. Kind of looks good. Yeah. I have the money. I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on in Indonesia. I'm not there. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. The shoes are here. So I take myself out of the, how I got here. I just want it. How does one How does one avoid supporting that move? Right. Well, I, you know what? I, it's, it's hard. I'm, I went vegan seven years ago. Right. And I remember when I, when I, when I full-fledged went vegan, I had to go home. I threw out all my leather shoes. <laughs> I threw out all my leather belts, <laughs> all my leather coats. Oh, right. lot, it, lot, it, lot. I went crazy. You went, but you sort of have to just... Look at everything that you've consumed, everything that you think you are, right? And look at it personally. So, right. okay, you okay? You like chicken? Okay, and then let's find out how the chicken got here. Yeah. And then you and then you start doing your research. You're like, oh my god, this is. I mean, I still like chicken, but look at this poor chicken. Look how he got here. Right. Right. He got abused by the time he got here. Right. Right. So so in order for you to like say you mean something, you look at how it got to you. So that's what I started to doing and. I think because of that, and I got ahead of it, I had a friend who's my age, stroke. Right. Right. Went into, another friend went into the hospital for knee surgery, found that he had to triple bypass surgery. Right. They told him to eat, stop eating chicken, stop eating fried foods, stop, you know what I mean? Stop right. eating cholesterol, all that stuff, right? right? So seven years ago, I got ahead of it. And I stopped because I was doing the exact same thing he was doing. Okay. Right? And now it's like, you know, it's about really fasting and, and eating healthy and feeling like where do you where your food comes from and that's why i try to make my clothing here in canada and really just in vancouver where i live right so that way the footprint so i could i could see where it, where it came from where you know? it came from exactly yeah. it's yeah. important so i mean with the way the situation still renders themselves now we still have these sweatshops we still have these places uh, around the world how can we as consumers help and stop this kind of thing from going on how well, can aclaymccray.com has all the clothing that you need. <laughs> <laughs> was that a segue? Was that a segue into that? that. Segue no, into I just that. really think, look at yourself. Right. I'm not perfect, but look at yourself. Just look at yourself. Okay. Do you really need this? Yeah. How do you need it? Right. Why do you need it? There's, there's, there's a lot of stuff here? out there online. There's a lot of oh, cheap yeah. stuff that oh, the, you know, these places are selling, and you know they're coming from places where these people aren't getting paid pennies on the dollar or whatever. Yeah. You know, they're, it's, it's a shame to support that kind of thing, but it it, 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 it's, it's something. But then we do it through our sports, too, because even our sports figures, like, like I said, people follow television. Like you gotta, it's television it tells you so many lies. It tells your vision what to do. Right. That's what it's there for. Right. Right. So you see people who don't have a, that much money wearing a $200 Nike tracksuit that they can know that they got for like $8. Right. Right. right? But their mind tells them that they are connected with that superstar that is on television telling them that Nike is great. Yeah. So how could they, who love that superstar, hate Nike for when the superstar is wearing it? Right. Right. So I think what people have to really uh, is. Stop hating, stop judging other people right. for what they're doing, and then look at themselves, and then it'll stop. Right? right? It'll stop. Right. Like, so for my leather belt now, I bought a vegan belt. Didn't last long. I was upset. I had to go to rope. You know, nobody wants to wear a rope in a nice pair of pants. No. <laughs> but, the Jethro look? The Jethro look, but you don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't do it. <laughs> you can buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean Jethro. I love Jethro. Jethro was that the was well. a, that, that, was, that was the bomb look. No, 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 that oh, was a good no, show. Those good the Beverly Hills Hill Village. Hey Hill man, that was the bomb look. Man. I love Jethro. <laughs> Jethro didn't care. Shit, he was getting paid. So like it's, it's like that. It's, the, it's all about attitude. I, I say that. I say if, if your right attitude, you could wear a garbage bag. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. Wow. Yeah. And in all disclosure, I have one leather belt. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? right? I was like, I wear it in yeah. case any of my vegan friends see me. Yeah. But yeah, it's just, uh, it's a matter of just limiting yourself to, you know, do what you can. Right, right. And don't just beat yourself up and think you got to do it all. Where's the future at, man? The future is your podcast blowing up and the next thing you know, 
You call me, I'm on my yacht somewhere. I'm like, <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? Probably it'd be an electrical yacht. And who knows the way it's going? And you're going to ask me, do Anthony wants to come back into society? I'm like, hell no. <laughs> send me send me the tape. We can do it oh via. We can do it viral. You oh, know? Yeah, man. Yeah. That's what I hope. Wow. The, the future is beautiful. Your children's and our children's. Yes, man. Become friends. Yes, man. And yeah. So once again, where can we find my brother on the internet? A Clay McRae, A C L A Y M C R A E dot com. Same name on Instagram and Facebook. I'm not gonna let you in on Facebook though. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. Oh, Anthony, this has been beautiful. It's a pleasure, man. man. It's been such a pleasure. Will you come back and yeah, uh, yeah, thanks for having me. We'll be showing some of the fashions and the designs of uh, Mr. McRae on our side. Of-